Hello friends, this video in matter and surroundings part 11 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. If the reason napkin ball disappear with, uh, with time without leaving any solid, so you, you must have seen the napkin balls in the bathrooms or in the cupboards. So these napkin balls directly convert from solid to gas. Why? Because it is sublimate. Since it is sublimate substance, it shows sublimation and directly it gets converted to gas. The next one is we can get the smell of perfume sitting at several meters away. So even if you are here, actually, you can feel the smell of this perfume. This perfume smell through air, these particles will come and hit your nose. Why? Because see, the perfume is actually when sprayed. If you see the DO also, you must have seen the DO and perfume. Actually, you can see that the perfume actually it's all uh, liquid and DO also liquid. When you spray, it is almost in the gas state and they have very high kinetic energy. Since they have very high kinetic energy the, and the uh, force of attraction in the particle is very less, they are free to wander around and thus they reach you even if you are at several meters away. Okay. Arrange the following substance in the order of attraction between the particles. So one is water, that is liquid, sugar, solid, one is oxygen, gas. So we know that solid has the strongest force of attraction. So this is maximum force of attraction and gas has the minimum force of attraction this has the minimum force of attraction and the liquid will be somewhere in between so we'll start with maximum force of attraction the sugar and then we have water and then we have oxygen this is decreasing order of force of Actually, the question has asked increasing order, so you have to flip the side. It will be oxygen, water, and sugar. Okay. The question is what is the physical state of water at 25 degrees Celsius, 0 degrees Celsius, and 100 degrees Celsius? So, if you see at 25 degrees Celsius is normal water, pure, the room, almost room temperature. So, it will be in the liquid state. And we have seen the graph that this is the graph we have seen. This is, let's suppose, minus 10 degrees Celsius. This is 0 degrees Celsius. This is 100 degrees Celsius and this is more. So at 0 degrees Celsius, it is in the dual state. It is also in the solid state and also in the liquid state. At 100 degrees Celsius, it is in the liquid state and also in the gas state. So that's how it is. This is from liquid to liquid state. Yeah. So at 0 degrees Celsius, it is both in solid and liquid. At 100 degrees Celsius, it is both at liquid and gas. And 25 degrees Celsius somewhere here, it is in the liquid state. Okay. Give reason to justify water at room temperature is liquid. See, water at room temperature is liquid. Because if you see the water at room temperature, what do you see? It flows easily. It has definite volume. It doesn't have definite shape. It has definite mass. All these properties prove that the water is liquid. If you talk about iron palmyra at a room temperature again, because if you heat it at almost let's suppose 2000 degrees Celsius, this will melt. This is iron. So I'm talking about palmyra at room temperature. So this actually, if you see at room temperature, this is what this is has definite shape, definite volume, definite mass. Everything is definite. It can't flow. So all these properties tells you that this is solid. Okay. Please note this is at room temperature. The alveda at maybe 5000 degrees Celsius will be liquid. Why ice at 273 is more effective in cooling than water at the same temperature? See, 273 Kelvin is what? 0 degrees Celsius. So we have seen the graph. This is minus 10 degrees Celsius. This is 0 degrees Celsius. This is 100 degrees Celsius. And then it has increased. Now at this temperature, if you see, as I told, you have both water and ice, right? Both exist. Now why ice has more cooling effect? Because ice actually will give energy. It will give energy to first convert from solid to liquid and then 
liquid 0 degree Celsius to liquid room temperature, let's suppose 30 degree Celsius. But this water molecule will give energy to convert from liquid 0 degree Celsius to liquid 30 degree Celsius or room temperature. So if you see in first case this I, this is for the ice and this is for the water. So ice actually gives energy for this also and for this also. So it is giving more energy. Right? It is giving more energy or actually it is taking energy. It is taking energy. It is taking energy because that's what we use in the term of camera, chemistry. It takes energy to convert from solid to liquid. So ice will take more energy than water, right? End state is same. This is for both these end state is liquid at 30 degrees Celsius. But ice will take more energy from the environment and thus ice will have more cooling effect. Okay. What produces more burns? Boiling water or steam? So if we see here, this is boiling water. And this is steam. Okay, so now if you see the steam will actually, it's the same question. See, steam will, end state for both is same. End state, because we are talking about the room temperature, end state for steam and boiling water is same. That is what? That is 30 degrees Celsius water in liquid state room temperature right assuming the room temperature is 30 so steam to convert to 30 degrees Celsius water it will take energy or it will give energy it will actually give energy it will give energy so it will give energy because we are converting from gas to liquid it will give energy to convert from steam to water at 100 degrees Celsius and then water 100 degrees Celsius to water 30 degrees Celsius. If you talk about the boiling water, boiling water is nothing but boiling water at 100 degrees Celsius. So it will it will also give energy, but it will give energy only to convert water at 100 degrees Celsius. That is boiling water to my room temperature water at 30 degrees Celsius. So in this case. This gives more energy. Since it gives more energy, it has more burning effect. So it has more burning effect. So it can cause severe burns. So steam can cause severe burns because its steam would release more heat energy. First to liquefy and then to it will release further energy to attain the room temperature. But the boiling water will just release energy to attain the room temperature. Okay. Now let's do a recap. The recap is we in this chapter we read matter is made of particles, small particles. These matter exist in three states, actually five states, but the three most common we study is solid, liquid, and gas. And the force of attraction is maximum in the solid, intermediate in liquid, and the minimum in gas. The space between the particles is and the kinetic energy of the particles is minimum in case of solid, liquid. A solid intermediate in liquid and the maximum gas so space and the kinetic energy follows the same trend right if the kinetic energy is more space is more kinetic energy is less space is less and also we saw that the arrangement of the particle is most ordered in case of solid in case of liquid it is multi-layer but in case of gases it is just random okay and these states of matter are interconvertible you can actually change the state from one state to another by changing the pressure and temperature. Sublimation we studied is nothing but a state where process where gas directly changed to solid and solid to gas. There is no liquid state in between. For example, ammonium chloride, naphthalene, these things show sublimation where there is no intermediate state called liquid. Bulk phenomena, boiling is a bulk phenomena. Why? Because all the particles of the water when you're boiling is at same temperature. All these particles actually convert to vapor state. Okay. Evaporation is surface phenomenon because the evaporation happens only on the surface. 
right? So some particles on the surface, they gain enough energy to overcome the force of attraction and they become vapors. So surface and boiling happens at the boiling temperature, but evaporation doesn't happen at the boiling temperature, it happens temperature below boiling point. The rate of evaporation depends on the area exposed to atmosphere, there is a surface area, the temperature, the humidity and the wind speed also. So all these four factors, surface area, temperature, humidity and the wind speed, they are responsible for evaporation and also evaporation causes cooling. We have seen so many examples where evaporation actually causes cooling, sweat is one example. The latent heat of vaporization is the heat required to change 1 kg of liquid to gas at atmospheric pressure at its boiling point. That is something we have seen. We have also seen the latent heat of fusion. That is nothing but the amount of heat required to change 1 kg of solid to liquid at its melting point. That's all we have studied. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online tests, get pre-study materials, find tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.